this is a six. So is this, this, and this. Now before you roll your eyes and are like, even five-year-old me knows this, I want you to ask how. How is it that our crazy smart brains can just see different shades of light and dark and are like, that's a six. And moreover, how can a computer do the same? Now, if you've been on the internet lately, you've probably heard a ton of talk about AI and machine learning, from self-driving cars to cameras that can translate text. Now, a lot of the computers do this with something called neural networks. These cool guys are a huge innovation in computer science because they allow computers to learn how to do something by themselves instead of depending on instructions from humans. There are many types of neural networks, but a pretty basic one to get started with is called a multi-layer perceptron. Sounds super fancy, but don't worry. Let's break one down. This is what a basic neural network looks like. It's made out of neurons, which are inspired by the neurons in our brain. For now, I want you to just think of each neuron as a number. These neurons make up layers, and these connections between layers are basically just calculations that determine what numbers the next neurons will hold. Now you're probably wondering how a structure like this can actually help our computer recognize our handwritten six. Well, to figure that out, we need to think about how a computer would actually see this six. You see, computers process images as a collection of pixels. Each pixel has a number value that dictates its shade. While you may be able to recognize a six easily, it's not so simple for a computer. Each of these sixes have very different values across each pixel, so it's super difficult to write instructions. You can't just say, oh, these pixels are black, then it's a six. Because in this image, not all of those pixels are black, but it's still a six. This is where our neural network comes in. At the start, you have the input layer, which in our case would be each pixel in our six. Then at the end, you have the output layer, which for us would be each of the digits zero through nine. Our hope is that once we've reached the output layer, the neuron with the highest number will be the one that corresponds with the correct digit we're seeing. So we get the start and we get the end, but what's going on in the middle? Well, those are called intermediate or hidden layers. They're like the secret sauce behind this whole process. Think of what they do as using really elegant math to do pattern recognition. For example, they might notice that threes, eights, and nines tend to have round upper halves, while threes, eights, and sixes tend to have round lower halves. So if our computer sees this guy from the start of our video, it'll run calculations in its hidden layers to recognize that it has a round lower half, but not a round upper half. So by process of elimination, there's a good chance it's a six. But before a neural network can start generating correct outputs, it needs to be trained. Okay, so think of our initial neural network as a little baby that's really good at math and like literally nothing else. It needs to learn, hence machine learning. And in order to do that, we have to feed it a lot of data to look at so we can start recognizing patterns in them. Then when we put these parts together, we can see our neural network actually being able to read numbers without any human instruction. Neural networks are gonna play a huge part in our future. The example we looked at today was pretty harmless, but imagine instead of needing to distinguish a six from an eight, a self-driving car needed to distinguish a pole from an open road. Understanding neural networks is the key to a better and safer future. Now, if you want to start actually coding neural networks, I've linked some resources in the description to help you get started. And next time you want to impress your friends, tell them you know how to read a six. It's pretty difficult.